Hey guys, welcome to Two Fat Guys Talking Football. This is John Gold, a.k.a. Jonah Hill. Sam Strong, a.k.a. Chaz Bono. Still alive, Chaz Bono, right? I didn't look. Still alive. Okay, well, he Eakin be. by. Eakin by. He's my Halloween. Eakin by the hair on his chinny chin. chin. He, he's my Halloween costume this year. Oh and I'd like God. to give a shout out to the guy who was, <laughs> who was, who was, who was fist pumping and chanting for jo or Chaz. My boy Sam here Chaz getting Bono. recognized as Chaz Bono, which the, to me at is like Bowl. at the Rose Bowl. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That makes my heart swell even more than it already swells from walking. Yeah, that guy made my day, so yeah. thanks. We're good. Uh, you, <laughs> speaking of good, UCLA coming off a pretty impressive 28-25. I, I don't know if I'd say impressive, but important and good when given the comeback and given... Given the circumstances. Given the circumstances. A circumstantially good win, yeah. uh, we'll say. Uh, UCLA beating Washington State 28-25 at the Rose Bowl. Uh, and now bye week, so we get to relax. Uh, UCLA, however, not resting on their laurels, uh, taking the weekend off a little bit, coming back Sunday uh, to prepare for Thursday's matchup at the upheaval, I guess we can say, uh, Arizona Wildcats. Uh, big, obviously the big news is Mike Stoops getting fired, and, and you know, UCLA players and <clears throat> the coaches to some extent are kind of saying that's that's them, you know, we're not of too course, worried. But of course, they got that's we got to focus on what we can control. But Sam, let's be honest. That's that's going to be a fired up Arizona team. You know, the the, the downside is you lose your head coach who, who recruited you when you came to play at Arizona for. The upside being, you know, maybe new enthusiasm uh, or you know, infusion of energy. Doesn't that doesn't that shock anyone? I feel like shocks me. Man. I feel like I was uh, the only one who was like, "Holy cow! Yeah. Like, why did they fire a guy after they played?" Oregon, Stanford, Oklahoma State, and USC in successive yeah. weeks, and I think three of those were on the road. Yeah, and, and the question that you kind of have to ask yourself is, was that, you know, forget, was, was it a right call or whatever, it is they made the call, and now how does UCLA have to adjust to them? And is that something that you do you think that a team has to adjust to? Well, I think their their defensive coordinator is the new interim coach, right? Yeah, so, Tim Kitch. Kitch? Kitch, I think, Kish. Yeah. So, obviously defense is going to kind of turn into the focus if your defense coordinator becomes the head coach. Yeah. Um, and that's something they obviously weren't very good at, I think. Oh, no. Team scored 40 some odd points against them. Yeah. So, uh, that should be interesting. I don't. I mean, they've always been billed as Nick Foles throwing it all around the field, but maybe yeah. their defense will take this bye week and, and you know, tighten up a little bit. Yeah, and, and the question for UCLA, of course, is, is can they match Air, what, what is expected to be Arizona's increased intensity? And this is a team, UCLA that has not shown the fire that you would kind of expect uh, of a team with a coach on the hot seat. That's interesting because I think Mike, I think the reason Mike Stoops was fired was because he was too much of like a yeller and yeah. fiery guy and everyone was just like, well, in one ear and out the other, like, we've tuned this guy that out. So, I don't know, yeah, UCLA doesn't strike me as the most like passionate team out yeah. there. But uh, given that the firing happened on Monday, I think the the newness of the firing that's be kind of worn off by okay. Thursday. So now you, you come into a game at Arizona, uh, UCLA uh, at three and three now, halfway through you know at the halfway point, kind of like what you said uh, last week, which kind of struck a nerve is, yeah the games might not have gone the way you know UCLA would have liked them to in terms of the pretty scale, but, but the win but, loss column is the same as it correct. As it, and now they're three and three, and you look at the schedule coming up, and, and you have. Arizona, Cal, Cal, whose coach just got fired. Yeah. Cal, who just got beat up by Oregon, yeah. and will likely lose to USC. Utah losing its quarterback. Utah's quarterback's out for the year. Colorado's yeah. still terrible. Yeah. And so kind of what you're seeing right now is, is, a, is a, a second half that's, that honestly is kind of lining up pretty well for UCLA. Starts with Arizona, but let's kind of go back uh, to the Washington State game a little bit. Washington State, much improved team. I, st I still think a, a three-point margin of victory is... is not kind of what you want against Washington State, but your starting quarterback comes down, your backup comes in, Kevin Prince, to, a, to, a, to a, a torrent of booze, and then responds to that. You know, throws an interception that, that was costly, but then comes again from that. What Kevin Prince do you think that we're going to see going forward, and especially in this Arizona game? Arizona game? I think you wrote about this on your blog. Uh, Kevin Prince played better because he wasn't, fe he wasn't fearful of getting yanked. And, uh, you know, I think that could help him going forward. I yeah. think it has in practice the last few days. And, yeah. and he looked pretty sharp throwing the ball. Yeah, and, and what you said about right now, and it's something that I, I definitely think is a, is a huge factor. And also, guys, real quick, we're going to get to a, a new feature here where we take uh, reader emails, uh, which is a really exciting new feature here we picked on Two, two Fat Guys Talking Football. Huge like step forward in terms of uh, <laughs> this progression here. In honor of 
two fat guys. We picked the two best questions. We did. So we're going to get to those. And uh, and so just to wrap that up, I do think kind of not having the burden of Richard Brijo staring over his shoulder is going to translate into just a more relaxed, kind of more patient Kevin Prince, rather than, you know, in that Texas game, you look at some of those passes, and it just looked like a guy who was trying to get it. You know, he was trying to get that, that play, that one play. That, that didn't work. Even in the even in the locker room interviews, in weeks past, he'd been like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, we'll be all right. And this week, he was like, hadn't even taken his you know, flak jacket off or whatever, and was like, yeah, it's feeling good. I don't care that I got booed. Like, yeah. you know, I led four touchdown drives, and all, each of them helped us take the lead. So I think he was... He was, he was uh, maybe a different man and, and a different quarterback, and that's going to be what this team needs going into crunch time. All right, let's get to... Uh, the special new bonus section. This Last week we had a 40-yard dash. That kind of added a little spice. Someone dominated the opponent. We're not going to get into names. Oh, my leg. We oh, don't need God. to get into names here, but one guy <laughs> took over the race and just really proved who the better man is. One fat guy burned another fat guy. I don't know if it's burned. It's more melted. I mean, yeah. we kind of oozed down the field. My buddy uh, timed it. By watching the video, and I think we were pushing six seconds. <laughs> okay. It's pretty pathetic. So it's high school sophomore year, whatever. <laughs> All right, let's get to the question. Okay, this one comes from Spencer. You're talking right. about the defense. I think uh, I know this, Spencer. Do you? Okay. Pretty sure. Uh, he wants to know if UCLA will play more man-to-man defense instead of the base zone. Tyler it Gonzalez, appears, nice kick. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. It appears that they've been playing. Also, uh, do you think man-to-man defense will solve some of their problems? So he basically wants to know if they're going to get away from playing zone. You know, I think this is kind of a hybrid defense. They, they, do, they do kind of do both. What I'm kind of surprised is that they, they've they stuck with the, the, the cushion, the, they the don't, corner cushion. They don't blitz a lot out of man coverage. Yeah, that's true. I, I think every time they blitz, it's not every time, but a lot of the times they, they're blitzing, it's in those fire zones. And, and the one thing that you're noticing this year is you're noticing much better play from Sheldon Price and Aaron Heston. And even when Sheldon went down, uh, Andrew Abbott stepped in, had a clutch, crucial interception. Aaron Hester, I think, had a team-leading nine tackles, I want to say, in this last game. You know, he's become more involved in the run game. And I think at a certain point, you just have to say, all right, you know, we have the size advantage on the on the, on the outside. Let's think, make use of it. I think it behooves them to play man defense because uh, I hate to call back to Utah, but that's the program I grew up watching. Uh, their defensive scheme Homer. is we're going to blitz and we're going to put our guys, our corners on islands on the outside. And yeah. if they get beat deep, they get beat deep. And I think UCLA might want to take on a similar philosophy given Aaron Hester's improved play. And yeah, Sheldon Price, I don't know what his deal is, but he's yeah. good okay. when he's healthy. They, they talk about him being back in a couple of weeks. I'm still a little skeptical. Let's keep going. To the next one? Last question, guys, and then we're going to wrap it up. This one comes from Al Bruin. I okay. seriously doubt that's his last name. <laughs> I was just Short. about to say that. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> what if it was? How funny would that be? <laughs> Apologies if your name's really Al Bruin. Uh, Short and sweet. Is Hunley ready if called upon? My opinion, no. My opinion is he is a athletic freak. I think he is going to be a sensational quarterback at some point. I think right now, I watch a guy who's a little tentative, who, who tucks the ball too often, who says, uh, you know, it, 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 and who runs with it like this and has yeah, to do forget that. Forget that. Uh, it, it's a guy who is just a little too green to to run the offense and kind of like, you know, I don't want to use the Tebow analogy, but but it just seems so natural. Kind of like the issues that Tebow has that Trent Dilf, that Trent Dilfer absolutely tore him apart and, and brilliantly is that you have to take away part of the offense when Tim Tebow is. In. It's a hundred percent with Kyle Orton, and maybe he's not as good. But it's 100% with him, and it's 70% with Tebow. That's kind of the issue with, with Brett Hundley is how, how restricted do you become or how much do you just say, all right, let him go. Let him, let him just kind of improvise and, and see what he can do. Okay, so if he's not ready, what do you, when does he get ready, or do you just redshirt him and wait till next season? At this point, six games in, my whole point was week one. If he's a package guy, if he's a Tebow-esque package totally guy, agree. use him week one. Week six, you haven't seen him at all. That's your answer. You don't see him at all. Now, obviously, it's a, it's a little different. But yeah, with what, Kevin are, the, what are the chances that Kevin or with Prince Richard plays, going down? What are chances Kevin Prince plays six more games? We don't know. But Mike Johnson did say very interestingly to me that they are going to have to tweak some things because they do have to protect the quarterback more. Not just because they're trying to protect Prince, but now that you know, Richard's gone, they don't even have that backup that they had. You know, if Prince were to get injured in the first place, which he did, leading to the switch. Yeah. Uh, I'm in agreement. I, I would redshirt him. You're already this far along in the year. He comes back next year as a redshirt freshman and seriously competes for time. I don't I don't think, you know, even, no matter what it is, throwing him in on the road at home, whatever, is, is, it's too late. I'm with you. Uh, guys, Al Bruin, real last name, and uh, and Spencer, no last name, also probably Bruin. I think he did submit a last name. I was trying to protect his confidentiality. Uh, whatever. Okay. 
whoever you are, thank you guys so much for watching and submitting questions. Also, uh, come back next week uh, with more questions for us. Hit me up at john.goldsdailynews.com. Uh, Sam.strong at dailynews.com. That also works. That? And uh, thanks for checking us out. John Gold, Sam Strong, uh, two fat guys talking football. We're out. Thank you.